My name is Michael Austin. Um, I'm the founder of Right Light, a student-run international social enterprise within SIFE Southampton. SIFE being who Mark works for. So SIFE is an international-run organisation with the goal to transform the lives of others through the positive power of business, as Mark so eloquently put. So I'm going to tell you what I've done, the why, however, my argument is that you should try and change at least somebody's world for the better. My story begins in my first year at university when I began by founding my own SIFE project. It has since developed from the initial idea into a sustainable and growing project. It's by no means the best SIFE project, but it has proved quite successful on the scale we've been working at so far. I say we because it, if it wasn't for a great team of fellow students and friends, it would have remained that just an idea. As Mark has outlined, we live in a world where we are living. Uh, we <laughs> we are living in a world where we can connect to one another across the internet and make personal connections with the problems of other people who we may never meet. My story is an example of this, as it was through Twitter, of all things, social media being something quite big today, um, that I was enlightened to the need of 1.7 billion people worldwide who rely on kerosene to light their homes, to educate their children, and to work at night. This one article from Twitter brought home to the real and stark contrasts between two worlds, the haves and have-nots of electric light, as you can see from the picture. We readily forget that elect what electric light has done for us. It has given us great opportunities to be productive, learn, and stay healthy. Imagine what it would be like if our lives were dictated by the onset of night's gloom. Just leave you there for a second. The only alternative to living in darkness for, as we heard, 1.7 billion people worldwide is currently a toxic, dangerous, and dim kerosene lamp. Kerosene is very expensive too, with families paying around a quarter of their hard-fought income just to gain some light. That's because they understand the value of light and of time, because time is the one resource which we all share equally, be it in the skyscrapers of global cities or the mud huts of Madagascar, where uh, my project started. However, there is a solution, one of many. Solar lamps provide a direct and immediate solution, providing bright light and eliminating, eliminating the need for toxic kerosene fumes and the considerable risk of fire. But, and this is a big but, and where it all comes from, although purchase prices of these lamps are falling, many of those in need are still unable to afford a lamp. Unable to afford a lamp. There is therefore a real need to make these solar lamps affordable to everyone, to 1.7 billion people. And once they have them, there are no running costs. They don't need to afford them anymore. So there I was, reading on Twitter, a superb solution, a technological fix, but still a crying need for affordable access to it. Now, having watched many TED videos and having joined a passionate change environment that was SIFE, I was struck by the idea that I could deliver a solution. So often we perceive great change, or we perceive creating change as being radical and starting from nothing. This is so often not true. Just think, we don't climb Everest from sea level. We start at base camp at 18,000 feet. Now, that will make sense when I say we can stand on the shoulder of giants, and that's how change comes about so often. My idea saw me standing on the shoulders of giants such as Mohammed Yunus, who created the idea of microfinance by giving just $27, I think it was, to a Bangladeshi woman. The founder, uh, sorry, and then the engineers at the solar lamp manufacturer who we later partnered with. See, the idea was pretty simple. Combine microfinance and solar lamps to provide an affordable access to solar lamps. I didn't invent solar lamps. I didn't invent microfinance. I stood on the shoulders of these giants. It was new, and I believed it could work, and those around me in SIFE agreed 
and invested their belief and their confidence in my idea's potential. Sort of an extra one to the three Ps that we talked about earlier, the belief that you can actually do it. So we recruited and developed a team of students who believed in Right Light and believed in themselves to deliver the project. We have never travelled to Madagascar. Instead, chosen a partner, a local NGO, and worked in conjunction with the sale amount suppliers. Again, thanks to the internet that we live in, the world today, we can make so much change by just staying in our campuses. Imagine what the people out there can do. It's down to the team skills, however, even though we did not go out. The skills, ideas, and belief that over two years, Right Light has provided affordable access to solar lamps to over 150 families in Madagascar and is beginning to expand to Kenya. The scheme is very simple. Firstly, to introduce and prove the benefits, the benefits of the solar lamps to communities, we ran a free one-week trial for 10 families. Their positive experiences were then presented at a community meeting where members of the community could pay a 10% deposit and gain access to a solar lamp immediately. We made it affordable, we made it accessible. We gave them an option. The concept was that over the next year, savings from their solar lamp would pay for the repayments and families would gain from the clean air and bright light and the financial savings coming from the future. However, we also learned, we also learned from this experience that even our low prices, we weren't actually providing complete affordable access for solar lamps to every family in the communities we worked with. We therefore invested the repayments we received to, up, uh, to set up community entrepreneurs who would rent out lamps nightly to members of their community, therefore providing affordability and flexibility to the families who could sometimes not afford to actually pay the repayments every single week. We gave them that flexibility. Our investments also empowered these entrepreneurs, the community entrepreneurs with an opportunity to generate their own income and help their own communities. It's a good feeling. Again, they repay us and the scheme will expand over time, self-funding and sustainable. Providing sustainable and business solutions is what we do. So, when you look back on it, it sounds enormous and challenging, well at least it does to me when I look back on it, but it didn't start out that way. Change happened through people collaborating in a project they invested their belief in. We also didn't invent, as I said, microfinance or the solar lamp. We stood on the shoulders of giants and scaled the challenges ahead of us. Every step taken was small, and together a series of small steps, be it cliche, made that change possible. We are all more connected, and we are all more capable than ever before, as we live in a world where the chance to create change is either, even better, uh, is easier sorry, than ever before. I implore you to believe you have the ability to create change. It's not as challenging as you believe. I was an inexperienced and young first year at university who had the belief that an idea could change, could create some change. If I could do it, then you could do it, and there's so many people who can go and actually do it. Through this experience, I know that there are people the world over who just lack that little bit of belief to change the world, at least somebody's world. As a great TED talk recently said, there, are not, there is not one world but seven billion interpretations of it. You just have to change one person's life for now. Start small. So the history and the narrative of our own times is told in terms of the acts of great people, like Gandhi or Martin Luther King, as we've heard of before. But I think, I think we should stop thinking that all our change has to come from these great leaders we all have our own why. We live in a time where we are empowered with the technologies to collaborate and share in the experience of creating change. I want to spread the idea that we can all create change if we empower ourselves and others with the, com with the confidence and belief in our own capabilities. Change isn't as challenging as you think. Scythe's uh, mission is to bring together the top leaders of today and tomorrow to create a better, more sustainable world through the positive power of business. Now let me bring you back a second there to the line leaders of today and tomorrow. 
Mark outlined it extremely well. To me, this highlights how the leaders of tomorrow are not yet deci decided. There is still that space to fill. We can all take that step. SIFE empowers students to provide leadership to further empower members of their communities, but this can also be achieved outside of SIFE and outside of universities. SIFE operates in the same world we all do, a world challenged by social inequity, economic shortfall, and environmental change. But through my experience in SIFE, I believe that we have the technological tools and shared drive for change across geographies to collaborate together and to overcome these challenges. But we need to believe that this is possible. I hope that I have shown there are, uh, <laughs> I hope that I have shown how SIFE students providing change is possible when you collaborate, innovate, and believe and invest your confidence in a better world. I also hope I have proved that generating change isn't as challenging as you believe. It does not require great people, but just willing people to take their first steps on epic journeys. I'd like to finish with a couple of quotes which resonate with me and my experiences in SIFE. Never doubt that a small group of committed and thoughtful citizens can change the world. That's always made an impact on me. And finally, Gandhi's become the change you wish to see in the world. At SIF, we have shown the truth of this. So I implore you to strive for change, to become a future leader. Imagine if we can, us students, you can. And together, in the words of the late inspiring leader of SIF Worldwide, Jack Shoemaker, how high is up? Thank you.